Hey nerds, we are talking about The Wheel of Time, episode 206, Eyes Without Pity. We are going to review the episode and then do a breakdown, starting now. Welcome to Nerd Social, I'm Nathan. And I'm Paula, welcome. Hey, so, the spoiler-free log line for this episode is, Rand makes a risky alliance in Egwene, gathers her strength to confront the horror of her circumstances. This is written by Rami Park and is directed by Moha Virilo. So, Paula, what did you think of episode six? I liked it. Very emotional for Egwene. Yeah. I was a bit disappointed when, because with the previous at the end of that, they showed us previews for the following episode. And there was this one scene where Egwene is essentially beating the crap out of her jailer. <laughs> and so I was really looking forward to that scene. And it does come up and just to be disappointed about that. Overall, it was good. Yeah, I liked it. I liked it as well. I still think the high watermark is still two episodes back for me. I but I and we're missing some cast members in this episode. Although I guess some of the cast members that we were missing from the last episode show up in this episode. So we we get to see where some of the people who weren't in the last episode what they're up to in this episode. Of course we still have the Moraine we're still following Moraine and Rand after escaping from Landfear in the in the previous episode. Yeah. And the last episode actually ended with with the I guess the cliffhanger of Rand being inside of the dream world and at the at the control of land fear so interesting it was interesting to see where that where that went in this episode so yeah i like the episode i feel like this is episode six we only have two episodes left there's a lot of there's a lot of loose ends to tie up i mean i know this is i know they're probably going to do another season but i'd like to like some of the storylines that have to do with this season to be resolved in the next two episodes and maybe they will because all these episodes are not like regular television length they're not like 45 minutes or like an hour so they usually get a lot done i feel like they got less done in this episode than they'd have in the previous episodes because they really, I think that the point of this episode, and, and if you watch the, if you watch the companion video that they have, like the explainer video, they really wanted you to kind of feel what Egwene was going through. So they spent a lot of time. So I hope, I mean, we can talk about this when we get into the breakdown. I hope this, that has a payoff, a satisfying payoff in the next couple episodes. But yeah, I enjoyed the episode. So how would you rate it on our scale? I'll give it a, a seven. Yeah. I think that's probably where I am as well. Like I said, I, I think that for the hour that you sat there, there, there was that they didn't juggle as many storylines as they they have in the past. I appreciated the stuff with Egwene. I appreciated the, the little that the stuff that we had with with Rand as well. I mean, there are other characters that could show up as well that I'm not going to spoil because it's not in, it's not in the spoiler free log line. We got some touches there, but like I said, this episode for the most part is exploring the ramifications of the what we saw at the end of the last episode. And not at the very end. The very end, I guess, was Rand in the dream world, but like just before that was Egwene getting that collar put on her at the end of the last episode. So so that's what we spent a lot of time on. And and like I said, I think it's it, it's good to see that. We'll see whether or not it was time well spent if there's like payoff yeah. down, down the road. So yeah, I think I give it a seven as well at dinner party. I think we should get into breaking it down. If you are enjoying the conversation, please like, share, and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. If you can only do one, like the video. It helps other people find it. it makes the YouTube algorithm happy. And with that, spoilers ahead. All right, so we have screenshots here of the episode. And as I said, this really starts with Egwene. And we cut away from time to time from what, what's happening to Egwene. It's basically her being being tortured for the entire episode until she breaks. So we start with, what is her name? The, the, Rene? Rene? Rena, Rena, Rena. Yeah, Rena is the, get her actual soldan. She's the soldan who is like the person who is, who controls this particular, the, Damabe, who, who's Egwene. And she comes in, it's interesting the way that she approaches this. She approaches this like, oh, some Saldan so think that you shouldn't have a personal relationship with your Damabe, but like, I think that we should have a relationship. So she tries to like, good cop her, like, it tries to like, tries to be really sweet, but like that, that breaks down by the midway point because she gets like so upset with her. I don't know. I think that the actress here who's playing Egwene actually does a really good job this, this episode that she, I mean, it's more, like I said, it's mostly 
mostly focused on her. Madeline Madden, she does some really great like bodywork acting, like twisting twisting herself in knots in a way to make it seem like something is actually pulling on her body. That that stuff was really cool. Like this stuff, you know, like no one's actually doing anything to her. Like she's really selling that someone's that she's in pain, and it's a it's really convincing. The I guess the makeup department also helps out here because at a certain point, like midway through the episode, she has like blood in her eyes and stuff like that. So I'm sure I assume that they're helping her out with that, of course. But yeah, even right here, when she tries to get the leash, when she leaves, she puts it on the the wall here. Like the way that she's contorting her body. Uh, it's very believable. Yeah, it's very believable. I don't know how many takes they had to do with this, but it looks painful. And, and yeah, and she throws up afterwards. Yeah, it's and that's the teaser and that's the beginning of the episode. And then we get back to Rand in the dream world. I might even, I'm probably going to pronounce this wrong. I know I'm going to pronounce this wrong. It's the location here is Talarond. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pronouncing it wrong, but it, it's the dream world. So he, he's with Lanfair and they're basically, he's trying to gain her trust and he, and she's trying to gain his trust. So they're just, they're kind of playing with each other a little bit here. She wants, I mean, we established in the last episode that she wants him, but, uh, but she's also very old. So I feel like at a certain point, she's also playing with him as well, because she, I, I think she knows that he loves Egwene. Later on, when she brings him to see Egwene, it's obvious that she's manipulating him to like leave the, leave the city to go after Egwene. So, and she, he apparently strikes a bargain with her to leave Moraine for her help. And at this point, I feel like Moraine becomes sort of like a background character in this episode until the very end. There's some stuff in here with her nephew, but like after Rand leaves like that, she's like, she doesn't know what to do basically. And forces are just like, she's being pushed by, by, by events. Yeah. And then we catch up here with one of the people I didn't mention at the beginning because that would have been spoilers is Min and, and Matt here. So they happen to himself, they make their way to the Kyrene Bane's town. But of course we know this didn't happen to make it their way to this town. Min is brought Matt here because Ishmael is a kind of controlling Min because the he what we find out a conversation soon after this that he wants her to connect Matt with Rand. Yeah. And this is back in fall with Nynaeve and I can't remember her name off the top of my head because she showed up in the first season. I know people who who know the book know Elaine. So they're in the cellar are being held by Rama in her water um her water basa. So they're being held. They don't know and also they're suspicious, right? Because at this point, like a Asidai trapped them and brought them across so like the very the beginning of this conversation is like why should we trust you and then they reveal that leandrine is the one who brought them here the one who brought the one who brought them there and she's a little incredulous at first and then she's like oh black aja exists and yeah this scene is also very interesting she basically gave up everything for her son right she gave up her she broke the oaths which we got we which we heard about in the previous scene she broke the oaths she's betraying her sisters for her son here and Lanfear comes here and takes it all away she basically kills her son she says that her son is a burden and she can't do anything about it like you could see how afraid she is of Lanfear just as afraid as Maureen was when she was running from her right like she knows that she's not Hello? nearly as powerful as her she knows that she could kill her if she wanted to so she just has to sit here and let her kill her son and she can't do anything about it and the other thing and the other thing is the other thing that Lanfear says is it really doesn't matter what was promised to you once you give an oath to the black, you can't take it back, right? So I can't imagine, I can't understand why she didn't, none of this really factored into her thinking at all when she made this deal. I understand wanting to keep this person alive, but like how could, how much stock can you, could you give in their word that they were going to keep her, her son alive? I mean, and as Lanfer said, whatever Ishmael is doing to keep her son alive, he's not very, he's not very alive, right? He's not very healthy. He's like half alive. He? Yeah, he's in pain. So yeah. And scene just made me shake my head so hard because everything so you did all this for nothing yeah because we were to believe that the main reason why she made a deal with the dark one was to save her son so now that her motivation is gone what's what is she going to do so that was a big question for me the other thing is that i got the impression that lanfear is plotting against ishmael because 
She reminded her that she did not make a deal with Ishmael. She did not serve Ishmael. She made a deal with the Dark One. So she has no loyalty to Ishmael. Yeah. Her loyalty is to the Dark One. Yeah, it's an interesting scene. We'll see, I mean, we talked last week about whether or not well, Landrine will be able to redeem herself. I'm not sure how much she's going to be able to do redeem. Well, she didn't. I don't know that she's killed anyone yet. She may have. She definitely betrayed her sisters. And, and maybe she'll be compelled to kill if she's asked to. Because if she doesn't, Landfear or Ishmael will easily be able to kill her because they both have they're both much more powerful than them but than any current Aes Sedai because they have like weaves from the ancient times before the world broke so uh, they we'll see how that how that works out we have some scenes here with um what is his name off top what is his name sorry lawyer lawyer yeah, yeah lawyer but we have some scenes with Loyal, and also we have scenes with the other, the Water and Agtar. So the High Lady Sora is basically just using him for her amusement. But as soon as he pulls focus from her, she, she dismisses him because of his singing. Here, he, they, I think the Ogres have communed with nature, and he can, he, his singing can make things grow, which transfixes everyone. And then she dismisses him because, you know, like, like I said, the attention is being pulled off of her. But yeah, they're playing their part here as servants but they're also plotting to get Egwene out of the city and also there's a also the horn that they were hunting for as well is what they what is what they're seeking is what was also and it what's his name Ektar says that we, we should just get the horn because it's probably going to be less far less guarded the, the, the mame because they are basically in kennels like dogs so we'll see i get it. it's hard to tell how Egwene is going to get out because there are lots of people who know that she's captured there's the, there's also Rand who finds out later on and of course there's Nynaeve in the daughter heir as well so i assume everyone is going to play a part in, in releasing her and she can only be released when the collar is taken off her and i think that's what Nynaeve is going to have to figure out in the next episode this is the thing that you you're talking about that you saw in the preview her picking up the pot and beating her and i know i was so happy to see that scene because i was like yes she's gonna get out of there she's strong only to find out that it was her imagination no she thought about it she thought about it and she was gonna do it she actually tried to pick up the pot but like this but she couldn't but she couldn't yeah she couldn't yeah like she's like <laughs> this more, more physical acting here is if she yeah she can't pick up anything that that she thinks is a weapon and this is what this is a plot point that they get come back to over and over again she can't drink anything for the, the majority of the episode because every time she picks up the pot or every time she reaches up a pot at least a sliver of her who's thinking okay i want some water but i also want to bash her head into this pot every single time that she reaches for it because i, I think that like Egwene probably could take her physically like she I, I think she's a fairly good fighter like she could take her physically but like like all, all the collar is preventing her from doing what she wants to do so yeah yeah she tries to reach for it again in the same scene and she gets twisted into knots. I think that at this point she's still using the the soft approach with with Egwene, but she changes that approach later on in the episode. So yeah, this is the conversation that Mint has with Ishmael, him basically asking her to set up Rand to connect with, with Matt. And as we saw several episodes ago, Min saw that Matt kills Rand. So yeah, she has the she has a dilemma here. This is the other character that I was alluding to in our spoiler free section that, that show up. So we see Lan here and Varen in her waters. If you remember from two episodes, two or three episodes back, they found a poem basically referencing Lanfear. So they all suspect that he's a dark friend and they're all looking at him sideways. And he's also acting weird, right? Like they have a conversation and Varen, I think, mentions that the Amelin seat is in a particular location and they quiz her, quizzed him on that when they, when he tries to leave. So he gets that information and then he tries to leave, which is super suspect, right? And I think in this conversation, he actually lets them know why he's been acting weird. And the reason that he's been acting weird is because Moraine found the dragon, which is something that she was, she tried to keep hidden the entire first season. Like she didn't tell any of her sisters, except for the Amelin seat herself, like because she's in, like in a relationship with Sushin, the head of the, the Aes Sedai. So I think that the head of the Aes Sedai knows, but no one else knows that she found the dragon. Well, I'm sure Landrine also knows because she's a dark friend, but yeah. So in this conversation, he lets he lets them know that that she found the the dragon because they're, I think they're very serious about killing him. So he has to give them something. 
<laughs> they're very serious about killing him. Like she's binding him, and they could just cut cut off his head because they they think that he's corrupted. Yeah, this is Lanfear messing with him again. We see all his friends dead around him, and actually, you know what? This is not Lanfear. This is Ishmael doing this. Okay. Yeah, this is Ishmael doing this, right? And then Lanfear comes in like she's saving him and pushes him out of Rand's head. Now I don't know how much that is actually happening. Like like she was actually she actually came in and helped him, and how much they orchestrated that because it's really difficult to tell it's really difficult to tell how much Lanfear and Ishmael are working together or working at cross purposes because they have their own agendas so maybe she came in there and she helped Ran but of course she's doing it just because she wants Ran or maybe they just set that whole thing up who knows yeah no I think this is real you know I think this is this was just her showing showing Ran that she has indeed been keeping Ishmael out of his dreams mm -hmm. and that right now he's only able to reach him because she has allowed it to. You can definitely feel the friction between Nancy and Ish Ishmael. Yeah. Ish yeah. As you can see that she's plotting something against him. Yeah. She's, I think, yeah, it's, def it's definitely the case, but I also feel like she's also working with him. Like Ishmael wants him to go to farm and he wants him to go to farm with Matt, but she's also manipulating him to go to farm because he she's showing him Ligwain, who's in farm, who's chain. She, he's, she was expecting him. He was expecting her to be in Targalon in the White Tower. So seeing her here on the floor mm -hmm. in this dungeon is a shock to him and has a brief conversation with her and then takes she takes it away. Like, look, right right here. She could have let them talk longer, but she stops it. Like, but she loves She's him. obviously manipulating him, You're right? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, you know what? I actually felt for her in that <laughs> moment. She was essentially relieving what she went through with the first yeah. dragon. You know, them having some type of relationships, but then him being in love with yeah. another woman and eventually marry that other woman. And you could you can see the like pain and the anger in her eyes. So I I don't blame her for that. I she's mean, I, you read pain and anger. I, I mean, I, I, would, I assume she's pained <laughs> and ang angry, but I also feel like she's manipulating him, right? Like she's the the look on her face, the satisfaction that that she's getting out of ripping him away from her. Because right now he's saying, "I'll do anything. I just need. To, I, I just want to get back to her." And she basically has him where she wants him, right? She gave him a, a little taste. She knows that he'll give anything to get to her. So, I don't know. Yeah. So, yeah, it wakes up. Doesn't want him to hurt. She really loves him. Oh, you're talking about... And I think she does, yeah. but I think that she will do anything to get him, including manipulate him. So, she doesn't mind if he hurts for in the short run, if the long run means that she is able to be with him, is my reading of how she operates. So, this conversation that they're having Having here is basically Rama saying that they should go back on a ship to let the White Tower know that Landrin is a dark friend or a, a black Aja because they don't want to send this as a message. It's they don't want it to, it to get intercepted and they're refusing to go until they get Egwene, right? This is Moraine writing to the Amelan seat and change your mind about what she's saying and also ignoring her nephew here. Again, he seems like a nice person. Hopefully later on, he doesn't turn out to be a terrible person, but they reconcile later on in the episode and also this like Moraine also kind of pulls rank on her sister because she's older than her sister even though she doesn't look like it she can't she comes in here and she tells her to leave her house because she hurt her son and she's like I'm the eldest sister you're in my house yeah that yeah it was cold, cold. it was that cold was and she's in her sister's head serious you got nothing from our father you you're basically like our mother which I guess the implication there is that their mother was a cruel person I don't know so yeah that was an interesting conversation but like I I think Moraine is sort of in desperation. As we saw at when the scene started, she had started this this uh, letter to Suan before and she destroyed it. So she doesn't even know how to tell her that she's lost her, her ability, I think, because she doesn't, because I'm pretty sure she doesn't know that. So yeah, we catch up with her, the Amelin seat, Suan, and she thinks that she has to use her power to, to, to kill someone and it's just Lan giving her information about the dragon and also but the dragon and also the what Moraine is doing. Yeah, this is a short conversation between the the false dragon and Rand. He uses his power here and burns himself out a little bit as well. And if you remember back to the previous episode, this guy was set up in a Kyrene for Rand specifically because the females Aes Sedai Chandlers cannot sh uh, teach a male Chandler, so so he needs to learn from from this guy. Yeah, and here is also when they happenstance get connected. He he happenstance gets connected with Matt, but of 
course, we know that this was all set up by Ishmael. Yeah. So they have a, a great reunion here. It's funny. Matt is, Matt this season, I, I guess they haven't used him a lot, but like, he's like happy to see Rand. He doesn't know that Rand told Moraine to tell everyone else that he was dead. He doesn't know that he's the dragon yet. I think Rand also tells him that in this conversation. But it's interesting that he's so happy to see Rand, but like he was there when he was in the White Tower and he could have given Egwene some comfort when she thought Nynaeve was dead and he didn't, like he left. So I don't, I, Matt is always doing the, not the right thing. Well, that's not true because in this episode, he has a choice, right? He has a choice. He Min tells him that if Matt goes with Rand, he's going to kill Rand. And he makes a decision not to go with him. So I guess he does still. There's a sliver of him that, that, that does the right thing, but not consistently. Yeah, this is them just trying to figure out how to break the collar. And Ra was saying that several Aes Sedai died. So some Aes Sedai died in another, and, and a blue Aja, and a blue Aja was captured. And we don't see that blue Aja until the very end of the, of the episode. It's, a, it's actually a character that we saw in the first season we hadn't seen her again since this season i think we hadn't seen her in this season i'd have to go back and look at the previous episodes yeah so this is i think this is around the point that her good cop or her niceness kind of wears off right she tries to connect with her and let her use her power you know with her permission so that they can do something very powerful here set this this tree on fire and i think that she thinks that she's bonding with her she thinks that she's she's getting through to her but she's still as soon as she tries to get the, get the cup is in pain because she still wants to beat her. She still wants to beat her, right? And this is why she she gets angry because she thinks that she was being nice and she starts kicking her. So yeah, the the bad the bad cop comes out here. I forget what that that short conversation was with between naive and then even in, in the daughter era. Yeah, I know that they were they tried to. Sorry, good. Go that was about Nanive telling Elaine that she can go back to the tower and warn yeah. the other sisters. She's she Nanive will be staying and get. Egwene out because that's her friend and then Elaine just because says no I'm friend, not yeah. leaving because Egwene is her only friend yeah, yeah her first friend, her first yeah. friend and, yeah. yeah yeah and this is like I said this is this Rand downloading and letting him know all the things that happened that he's the dragon that he told Moraine to tell them that they were dead and then he's asking him to come with him to farm and he says that he will and yeah and Min she she loses her her deal here by telling Matt the truth and I don't know which also makes it I mean Matt is Matt feels betrayed matt think matt said says that I, I thought you were my actual friend and he and she says yeah i am your friend that's why i'm telling you this you don't know what I'm, I'm giving up yeah her foresight is definitely a burden they showed you in a previous episode like her's talking to like a young boy and he's like what am i gonna be when i grow up and all she sees is him is dead as a dead, dead as a child so that that the it's a burden it's a burden knowing the future and she wants to lose it but she doesn't she decides that she doesn't she doesn't want her her prize more than she wants her friend to not kill his friend so like matt doesn't want matt doesn't right here it is, it's unclear what he's gonna do um and you see him following rand yeah you see him following rand in the next scene and i think un all the way until the last moment i thought he was gonna connect with him and he decides not to this is her reconciling with her nephew and she gets she the news that the ambulance seat has come with 13 or 14 aja i forget how many 14 yeah so she has aja from each each group and landrine happens to be one of them she doesn't know what it's about yeah and matt does decides not to go and he said i'll, I'll just I, I guess i'll go by myself and then he gets a uh, rand gets stopped by land to come in front of the, the Amelin seat. And this is near the end of the episode here. So we see them trying to unlock this this brace and Nanif still, I think we were talking about this last week, Nanif still has very poor control over her power. Even though she's like the most powerful one, she like, all of them they're, they're all using very little amounts of power and then she uses a bunch of power which or alerts the nearby the Mare and Rama has to go out there and basically take the scent off of them and she her she doesn't die but she her water dies and her water dies and she gets captured this she takes down some of them though she takes down a lot of them she like once her water dies she kind of goes crazy and, and like folds a soldan like a piece of paper which i guess kills the dame like maybe there's there I, I don't know if the when the soldan dies the dame also dies 
but she wasn't able to control her her powers after she killed her yeah and we're juxtaposing these two scenes with her hanging her up here and, and suffocating her now i do want to add that when they were trying to open up the collar i think Nanive is the one who figured out that the only way to open it is if it's on right somebody. it wants to be on around someone it's like in pain or something like that unless it's around someone which i don't know what that how that helps them like but yeah it's i guess we'll see later on in the next episode yeah this is what i was talking about like she she folds this the soldan and like breaks all of her bones and it seems to hurt the dame as well so i don't know what the we i mean we know that there's a connection between the two of them but maybe maybe if she dies they both die yeah but she twists her like a pretzel and they have to look on and do nothing basically or they're going to be caught and i think this is around the time that she breaks yeah she picks up yeah she picks up the water jug and she can actually pick it up because it's no longer a weapon and she just pours it out and then we find out that the in the previous scene we also also saw that she was trying to talk to the person in the pre in the next cell and the person in the next cell was just reciting the dogma that she was given and we find out that this is one of the blue aja she's like you lasted longer than i did and i'm and i was a blue aja yeah and basically the episode ends on that very upbeat note now i'm pretty sure that's the blue aja that that means a leash because remember Rama said that two of her sisters died but one the no, Aja I didn't get that and, sense and I think that they were taken more recently I feel like they have had the Dame under control for a very long time my sense from that conversation was that it was a it was an Aes Sedai but it was an Aes Sedai from like 100 maybe 200 or 300 years ago it wasn't a, a reason it, the Aes Sedai who did it isn't a recent Aes Sedai because even Leandrin who is a black eye if you remember from the previous episode, she was disgusted by what they were doing to the women who could channel. So I think it, it's something that an NI yes. said I did a while ago. And the Shan Chain has been using that technology or that those collars sent ever since. I, 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 I my, my sense from the conversation that they had is that Rama and this Blue Aja and two other Grey Aja came to investigate the Shan Chain actually coming to this the shores. And they were ambushed and some of them were killed. Arama escaped, but this Bluaja, and actually I know her name. I have it in our notes here. She showed up, like I said, in, in season two, in season one. Megan, what we saw her in the White Tower. So Megan was was captured. So that's the sense that I get. That the sense that I get is that this technology, this collar that they've been using, they've been using for some time now. Is their culture have been making slaves of women channelers for a very long time? Is what I get. I mean, I might be wrong, but I don't get a, I don't get the sense that they. I think they basically did the same thing with McGain that they did with Rama. As soon as they were able to overpower her, they put a collar on her and they would have had to already have a collar, right? So yeah, I'm interested to see what ha how this plays out. This is, it's, I was joking, of course, when I said this, it ended on upbeat though. It ended on a very bleak and terrible note. So hopefully in the next episode, we we, we, we see a Gwen get free because I, I actually, you know what? I was saying that Ran might come, but Ran is being held by the Amelin seed. So I don't think he's going to be coming to farm. So it's basically up to Loyal and and Egwene in Dorair, which I keep calling her Elaine, and Elaine to, to free her. And of course, so Egwene to, to a certain extent, but like at the end of this episode, Egwene seems to be broken, so she's gonna need help. So yeah, any other thoughts before we, we wrap up? No, I definitely enjoyed this episode. And I'm just, I'm hoping that Egwene is going to escape. I hope she's, and, uh, not, uh, I hope uh, she's gonna get her revenge and on that woman who just now hung her on a wall, but we'll see. All right, so that is what we think, but we wanna hear what you guys think. So comment down below like share and subscribe and we will see you in the next one all right guys bye